Hi, Mum. Yeah, I'm sorry. I know I've been a nightmare to get hold of these past few weeks. I'm really sorry. It's it's this new job. It seems to be taking over my life. I don't get a minute to myself. How's the job going? Yeah. Um. Great. I mean, well, it, it's interesting. I've met I've met some some very interesting people. Yeah. Yeah. You you could say that. I mean, some of them think that they're God's gift, the best thing since sliced bread. Yeah. Quite they're quite famous some of them, I suppose. You may well have heard of them. You might have known them quite well, in fact, when you were at school. Mum, you know I can't tell you anything. It's counselling, so it's strictly confidential. OK, Mum, here's one that I can tell you about. I'm not going to use any names, but I am about to see this one lady. And she, I reckon, is going to have, all told, about nine kids. I mean, she's already had six. And she hates being pregnant. Like, I mean, she hates it more than anybody I've ever met or spoken to. <laughs> she does sound just like Queen Victoria. That is so funny. <laughs> I mean, but of course, that would be crazy because you and I both know that Queen Victoria has been dead for what? Ooh, 119 years? <laughs> Queen Victoria. <laughs> I really don't understand why we are here, Dr. Cat. Albert and I have the most perfect relationship. I adore him. I love to be with him every day. Every day, hour and minute. <laughs> I never let him out of my sight. Now, when he left for Coburg at his father's funeral and left me and the children alone, well, I was devastated that he would leave me. I follow him from room to room when we have an argument and I even get up just a little bit earlier just to watch him shave. <laughs> it's rather thrilling. <clears throat> Albert, is there something that you would like to add? Uh, well, my dearest, I, of course, love you very much. And I love my life with you. You see, perfectly pointless as being here. I'm sure you've got more important things to be getting on with, Dr. Cat. Like, well, whatever it is that you do. As for me, I have an empire to run. <laughs> Let's be off, Albert. Actually, my angel, it was I who arranged this meeting with Dr. Cat. What? But why? Well, of course, it is so nice to hear you say such lovely things about me, as always. But this morning, you did throw a cup of tea at me. Well, I apologised. Victoria, violence is never acceptable under any circumstances. Please think of other ways in which you can let out your famous temper. Albert, why don't you tell Victoria what you told me earlier? Well... As for spending so much time together, I, of course, do love spending time with you. But a man does have to get a full 12 hours sleep from time to time. <laughs> and at one point, early in our marriage, I did have to consult a friend for advice on how to tame your affections towards me. You did what? Who? Which friend? Don't be mad. Lord Melbourne. Lord M. My Lord M. You spoke to the Prime Minister about our relationship before consulting me. Well, no, actually it was Stockmar who I spoke to, but you see your attachment to your Lord M. Aha! I have told you before, uh, this relationship with your Prime Ministers must remain strictly professional and you cannot be seen to hold any bias. Oh, Albert, you are just jealous. And in any case, he's dead now, poor man. Thank you, Albert, for speaking so openly and honestly. Victoria, perhaps you now would like to air some of your grievances about Albert? No, that will not be necessary, Dr. Cat. Albert is an angel, and uh, I must behave better. Are you sure that you have nothing to say? Nope. Nothing at all. You're joking, right? Joking? Look, 
from where I'm sitting, it seems to me, Albert, that your desire for authority and control borders on, well, what we today would call gaslighting. Ah, yes, gas lamps. Uh, let me tell you about some of my other favourite inventions. No, Albert, that won't be necessary. Albert, you make Victoria feel so bad and guilty about her outbursts that she forgets completely why she was ever angry in the first place. I'd like you to remember, Victoria, that your feelings of frustration, disappointment and anger are valid and understandable. You had a controlling and emotionally neglectful childhood. You've got all of those children to think about and the public scrutiny of being queen. Albert, it's not your place nor your right to minimise or invalidate Victoria's feelings ever. It's also rumoured that Albert thinks that Victoria possesses the madness of her grandfather. That being said, Victoria, you must work on how you express your feelings. Don't follow Albert from room to room screaming at him and absolutely no more throwing cups. I am not mad. I do not possess... Great, that's all you took from what I just said, is it? You have to understand, Dr. Cat, that Victoria was kept very young in the mind and so sometimes it is like arguing with a child. I am a Victorian man and I am the only man in the world who does not have full control over his wife. I also take a full interest in our children's upbringing and education, which makes me very unusual for a man of my time. On top of this, Victoria has said some rather alarming things about our children. No one is saying that Victoria is a saint. Far from it. In fact, I think you two are probably made for each other. Oh, so lovely of you to say so. <laughs> Thank her. Your marriage counselling session is now over. Victoria, please allow Albert some more freedom and time to himself. And Albert, please be more patient with Victoria, particularly when she's pregnant and trying to run a country. Now, let's move on to your family counselling session. Family counselling? It's not Mama, is it? No, my angel. And neither is it one of your disreputable uncles. It is our son. Oh. Which son? I don't care which one it is, as long as it's not Bertie. I can't bear to look at him. Mama, Papa, I finally made it as king. Cheers. Let me guess, you're not amused, Victoria. I never said that. But you're thinking it now. 